Touch on confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars, ready to begin seeking the sands of past life. I've watched and listened to and followed different rover missions just as a member of the general public uh, throughout my life, but being actually on the team and getting to see the images that are coming down, it's it's incredible to me because it's exciting just to see those initial images, but it's also incredibly exciting to think about how much more we have ahead of us and what we're about to do. Uh, so that's that's really exciting. It feels like a really, really amazing moment to be a part of this mission and a part of JPL. I was first taken on kind of to to start to address how we are going to find biosignatures on Mars, how we're going to go about searching for potential signs of past life. So a biosignature is sort of an umbrella term that encompasses any type of evidence of past life. So on Earth, when we think about, you know, a couple billion years ago, back in the early stages of Earth history, most of the planet was dominated by microbial organisms. We didn't have a lot of complex organisms. It was teeny tiny bacteria and archaea, things that we can't see with the naked eye. And so finding evidence of that past life and understanding how it interacted with the planet is a little bit trickier than just finding, say, a dinosaur bone um, in the field. And that type of really simple microbial life is what we are potentially going to find on Mars if life ever existed there. So we need to have a good, a good approach to search for those types of biosignatures. And we sort of use the Earth as an analog to do that. The, the landing site where the rover has landed, Jezero Crater, is a really cool and interesting and exciting place for the rover to be investigating and exploring because it used to hold a lake in it. So it's this crater that has a sort of fan shape on one edge of it, and that is a delta. So here we have river deltas that open up into lakes and, and the ocean. And that type of system existed on Mars in the past when Mars was warmer and wetter and had a thicker atmosphere several billion years ago. So that's really exciting because we know that in river systems and lakes and oceans, places where there's a lot of water on Earth, those are really good environments for life to exist. So if life ever did exist on Mars, this would be a really good place for it to have existed. So hopefully the rocks contain some evidence of that if it ever did, um, if life ever emerged on Mars. So I'm really hoping that we find some kind of evidence of that in the form of, there are several different types of biosignatures that I typically look at and others look at um, on Earth. And we're hoping that some of these might be present on Mars. So those can be anything ranging from actual fossils of bacterial cells. We do find several billion year old bacterial fossils on Earth. Um, there are also microbial mats or stromatolites. So if you ever go out to like a river or a lake and you see that kind of scuzzy green mat on the surface of a rock, that's a microbial mat that's built by bacteria. And those entire mats, that, that kind of layered structure can get preserved in the rock record. So that's something that you would be able to see kind of from a distance. You can see those structures with the naked eye. Um, and then organic compounds, those carbon-based compounds that we know are generally made by, by organisms, life on Earth. If we find organic carbon compounds preserved in the rocks on Mars, that will be a really exciting indicator for us as well. So the instruments on board the rover are really powerful instruments, each kind of individually, but they also work together very well. So there are a few instruments that use lasers and x-rays. So one of them that I'm really excited about, and I'm on the, the team for a couple of the instruments, but one of them is called Pixel, and it is an XRF machine, which is x-ray fluorescence. So what it can do is send a beam of an x-ray beam onto the rock surface, and then it collects information about the elemental composition of the rocks. So it tells us what types of elements like calcium and silicon and magnesium, where they are on the rocks, how much there is of any of those elements. And then another instrument called Sherlock is a Raman spectrometer. <laughs> you know, they, 
at JPL and NASA, we like our acronyms. <laughs> Um, so Sherlock is a Raman spectrometer and it will use lasers to analyze the rock surface and it can tell us what types of molecules are in the rocks and potentially tell us if there are organic compounds. So carbon molecules that may have been made by life. So that's pretty exciting. Um, and then SuperCam also has lasers in it. And SuperCam is really cool because with both Sherlock and Pixel, the instruments have to be right up next to the rock to be able to collect any information. But SuperCam can use lasers to analyze something that's even, you know, a few meters away from the rover. So it can stand back from the, the rock outcrop and send a, a laser at it and then collect data about chemical composition and, and molecules and elements that are in the rocks. Getting samples back to Earth from Mars is kind of a difficult challenge for us. Um, there's a reason that it has never happened before. We have to be able to send um, send a rover to Mars to collect the sample, but then that rover has to also be able to launch back off the surface of Mars and travel back to the Earth, which is a difficult thing. So this rover is going to be, Perseverance, is going to be driving around and collecting those samples and then putting them in a, a sample cache and leaving it on the surface. And then we'll send the Mars sample return mission, which is a two-part mission, and it will go and collect the samples, launch them off of the surface, and then send them back to Earth so that we can analyze them here in our labs. When I was you know, a, an undergrad or a young kid, if you had asked me maybe five or 10 years ago, I would not have known that I was going to end up at JPL. And it's been a really exciting ride to get here. But I, I just really hope that people, if they're interested in science and math and engineering, that they pursue those passions and their curiosity and that they know that working at JPL and working at NASA and working on these kinds of missions is within their grasp. So follow your dreams. <laughs>